public reading of scripture community welcome tonight we have a special time listening to young adults in the early 20s and with today's day and age and all of the that generation embracing all kinds of crazy stuff you're going to see some of the people from our yod ministry yod st stands for young adults discipleship and we run that because we want to equip the next generation with situational awareness, scriptural awareness, and we would love to flood their minds and hearts with the Word of God so they understand prophecy, the end times events, and Israel. That's why we're called Behold Israel. And so tonight I'm going to bring in each one of them. Let's start with Barack. Hello. Mr. Barack, where are you? What, uh, what city? I am from Palm Bay, Florida. So you're in Florida right now? Yes, sir. All right, nice and hot down there, I think, huh? Yeah, we're actually getting our uh, thunderstorms back in the afternoons. It's pretty nice. So it's kind of cooled things off. Now, oh, yeah. uh, we're not going to stop there. We are not going to stop there because we're going to bring in Joel. Joel! Hey. Shalom, everyone. Shalom. Look at your swag. I love the, the, the whole <laughs> Israel logo. You, you go all the way, not just with a shirt, but with a hat. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. And we're... And where are you uh, right now? What city? Um, Greensboro, North Carolina, USA. Oh, nice. Nice. And uh, the weather there is probably quite warm as well. Yeah, it's summertime in the, in the upper 80s and 90s. Okay. Okay. Well, hey, is this where I'm going to stop? Oh, no. You know I'm not. <laughs> so we're going to bring in Tess. Tess, Hi, great to see you. Where are you right now? Alberta, Canada. So you're Canadian. Yeah. Alberta is very beautiful. Do you snow ski? Um, I did once. <laughs> okay. Wow. Banff National Park, well worth a visit. I don't know if you've been there. Beautiful place. Yeah, a couple times, yeah. So, folks, we have another person that's going to come in, hopefully later. He's struggling with some of the tech, and we'll introduce him if he makes it in. But um, I am going to take a risk. And uh, Brock, I know how you love to be in the public eye, so I'm going to ask that you open us in prayer. Oh, boy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Ask the Lord would bless the time tonight and uh, all the people still making their way into the room. Brock, as the Lord leads, go ahead and lead us in prayer. All right. Thank you, dear Lord, for this beautiful, wonderful opportunity that Mike has given us. <clears throat> I pray that you guide us in our journey throughout this wonderful video that be able to give us the guidance that we need and the food for thought. And for those who are also watching right now, pray for the strength of your love to flow within us. And hope you don't ever want to tell us internet so he can come back and hopefully read. We pray that you give us all, all the love to keep us going through your holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brock. All right, folks, uh, just a reminder for those who are just coming in, we are using the New King James Version, so if you want to follow along for a word for word, all we do here is just read Scripture, sit back, listen, share this with your friends. We're going to have a time where the, the community can comment, and you know I love to post some of those comments. Some of you really have some great comments. First section we're going to be reading from is Zechariah chapter 9. And if you remember last week, uh, it talked and gave a snapshot of what life would look like in the millennium. And so here uh, is the uh, passage, Zechariah chapter 9. I'm going to jump straight in, sit back, and listen. The burden of the word of the Lord against the land of Hadrach and Damascus, its resting place, for the eyes of men and all the tribes of Israel are on the Lord. Also against Hamath, which borders it, against Tyre and Sidon, though they were very wise. For Tyre built herself a tower, heaped up silver like dust, and gold like the mire of the streets. Behold, the Lord will cast her out. He will destroy her power in the sea, and she will be devoured by fire. Ashkelon will see it and fear. Gaza also shall be very sorrowful, and Ekron, for he dried up her expectation. The king shall perish from Gaza, and Ashkelon shall not be inhabited. A mixed race shall settle in Ashdod, and I will cut off the pride of the Philistines, I will take away the blood from his mouth and the abominations from between his teeth. But he who remains, even he shall be for our Lord or our God. 
and he shall be like a leader in Judah, and Ekron like a Jebusite. I will camp my house because of the army, because of him who passes by and him who returns. No more, no more shall a, 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 no more shall an oppressor pass through them, for now I have seen with my eyes. And just for the record, folks, the ancient Philistines are absorbed into the table of nations. They cease to exist. They are no more. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? Now, rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion, messianic prophecy. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey, a colt, the fowl of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The battle bow shall be cut off. He shall speak peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. I wonder who he's speaking about. As for you also, because of the blood of your covenant, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Even today I declare that I will restore double to you. For I have bent you to my bow, fitted the bow with Ephraim, and raised up your sons, O Zion, against your sons, O Greece, and made you like the sword of a mighty man. Then the Lord will be seen over them, and his arrow will go forth like lightning. The Lord God will blow the trumpet and go with the whirlwinds from the south. The Lord of hosts will defend them. They shall devour and subdue with sling stones. They shall drink and roar as if with wine. They shall be filled with blood like basins. They shall be filled with blood like basins, like this, the corners of the altar. The Lord their God shall save them in that day and the flock of his people, for they shall be like the jewels of a crown lifted like a banner over his head for how great is his goodness and how great is its its beauty grain shall make the young men thrive and new wine the young women that's a huge truth bomb a lot goes into that i don't do teaching in prs we just hear what the <laughs> lord, lord says to us i couldn't resist by making a few comments there so we're going to go straight to brock right now but before we do, I promised you another guest, everybody, and that is Montel. And Montel, mm -hmm. maybe we'll see how long you can stay in because we have uh, internet bandwidth uh, challenges. So uh, yeah. if you freeze, if you get knocked out, just come right back in. But now we're going to read, and I'm going to give this to you, Brock, Psalm 58. And then we're going to have time to comment and listen to what you have to say, what the Lord spoke to you. And we'll hear what the community has to say as well. So, Brock, Psalm 58. All right. Do you rulers indeed speak justly? Do you judge people with inequity? No. no. In your heart you devise injustice. In your hands mete out violence on the earth. Even from birth the wicked go astray. From the womb they are wayward spreading lies. Their venom is like the venom of a snake, like that of a cobra that has stopped its ears, that will not heed the tune of the charmer, however skillful the enchanter may be. Break the teeth of their mouths, O God, Lord. Tear out their fangs of the, of the of those lions. Let them vanish like water that flows away. When they draw the bow, the, when they draw the bow, let the arrows fall short. May they be like a slug that melts away as it moves along, like a stillborn child that never sees the sun. Before your pots can feel the heat of the thorns, whether they be green or dry, the wicked will be swept away. The righteous will be glad when they are avenged. When they dip their feet in the blood of the wicked, then the people will say, Surely the righteous the righteous still are rewarded. Surely there is a God who judges the earth. Now, Brock, uh, let me ask you, you know, after reading Zechariah and sh seeing that that was the Messiah riding on a donkey who would bring in everlasting righteousness, as you look at the world right now, right now, before Jesus comes to set all of this stuff purely righteous as a young as a young person what do you see going on in the world um just just give me just give me your thoughts on that and then i'm going to ask you what the lord said to you there is a lot of <laughs> a lot of evils i'm seeing going hmm. about especially during my generation and hmm. a little bit above me because that actually reminds me of a story my my dad had uh, gone to a job 
and there was a children's cartoon playing. He actually overheard one of the people that was a child, mind you, cuss in front of an entire audience. That was an overseas. That was an overseas children's cartoon. Wow. So that's where we're at as a generation. So this psalm, I, I, it, 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 they struggled with the same issues that we do. We, they see evil, and then God promises them that there will be righteousness. We just need patience. And um, Brock, what did you hear the Lord say to you during the reading of either of these chapters? From whatever you were reading, I had been touched with the factor that there was a veil that was being lifted upon the people that they've done so much wicked and then god had showed them i this is the way this is how we do it this is the taking off of the veil this is what purity looks like hmm. and within uh psalms 8, uh, 58 that was a cleansing as well as um when you had read of the people that were wicked not people I've heard a lot of people who are not believers say that if there's a God, why is he letting all this happen? All that's happening for a reason. And those who claim to think that people don't go unjust will be brought to justice. Yeah, it just takes patience. You know, the, the human systems may fail, but God's, God's not going to let anything go by. Now, I want to come to you, Joel. Tess and Montel, I'm going to ask you at the very end, so stay stay tuned. But... Um, Joel, as we read these two chapters, what did you feel the Spirit of God just say to you uh, that you'd like to share? Um, well, in Zechariah 9, it's just um, uh, Zechariah 9, 9, just seeing the Messianic prophecy of Jesus um, and him just riding on a donkey. I, I just wonder how that was 2,000 years ago, just to envision that as one of his disciples. And, you know, that was just one of those things that always stands out to me in Zechariah 9. Um, mm. And also the millennial kingdom, I just can't wait to, well, one, for him to rapture us, and then, you know, to set up his kingdom, it's going to be a wonderful time. Well, more than wonderful. And yeah. then um, for Psalms 58, um, I just, you know, it's, it's scary in the world nowadays, and um, I feel like the more, like, I just see, like, uh, what's going on in the world. I just I just run back to the Bible and run back to, the more, I, I guess the more I see that's going on in the world, the more I just wanna seek after Jesus because when you when you get your eyes off of Jesus and start looking at all the other stuff, you freak, you, you freak, you, you, that's why you have to keep your eyes on Jesus. So that's what I want. Yeah, I appreciate that folks. You are hearing young adults, look at this. These you, you don't classify all the young people as as uh, globalists because you're looking at the people that God chose at such a time as this in their age group that are seeing the truth. I heard Joel, you mentioned rapture, millennium. These are concepts that a lot of pastors around the world don't even know much about. And here you are as a young adult talking about that even after we read scripture. Now, folks, I'm going to post some of your comments. My question to those of you who are watching this is, what did you hear the Lord say? Man, this, the chat room is blowing up. It's so much that my, my software can't uh, keep up with it. Um, let's do this. Okay. Oh, where there you are, Chris. Chris, it's good to see you, my friend. Psalm 58 is a cry for justice. David deeply need, calls for justice, but there will be a day of accountability. Amen. We're waiting for that. We're totally waiting for that. Um, let's see what we have here. Um, let's see. Um, oh, here, this is good. Gary, I th I'm glad you brought this up, Gary. In Zechariah 9, verse 9 through 10, there's a very large gap of time bridged since the Old Testament prophets couldn't see the church age. Yeah, they couldn't see a lot. They could only see what the Lord revealed, and uh, time was kind of skewed. They just saw the events. Verse 9 is Jesus' first coming, and his second coming is in verse 10. Zechariah compressed a large time period in two verses. Thanks, Gary. That's absolutely true. Um, let's do this one. Let's do this one. Um, oh, hey, Penny. This is for you, young adults. Huh? You like that? Isn't that, isn't that cool? 
And then, then let's put Don's up here before we continue. So many signs converging at once, living in some hard times. Our Lord is coming sooner than we think. I do, I do believe that, Don. I do believe that when Jesus said, when you see the fig tree come back to life, that's Israel, you know that the tribulation is, is really close. And uh, if that's the case, then the rapture is close. And uh, the events that we see in the Middle East are further prophecies being fulfilled. And that leads me to say what you said there, Don, so many signs converging at once. Yeah. So, my friends, we are going now to... We're going now to Psalm 59, Tess. And Tess, your internet is working quite well, I have to say. Yeah. When we were That's testing this earlier, uh, it wasn't. So, nope. test <laughs> Psalm chapter 59. Listen up, folks. Here we go. Deliver me from my enemies, O God. Defend me from those who rise up against me. <clears throat> Deliver me from the workers of iniquity and save me from bloodthirsty men. For look, they lie in wait for my life. The mighty gather against me, not for my transgression or my sin, O Lord. They run and prepare themselves through no fault of mine. Awake to help me, and behold, you therefore, O Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel, awake to punish all the nations. Do not be merciful to any wicked transgressors. At evening they return, they growl like a dog, they go all around the city, indeed they belch with their mouth, swords are in their lips, for they say, who hears? But you, O Lord, shall laugh at them, you shall have all the nations in derision, I will wait for you, oh, I will wait for you, O you his strength, for God is my defense. My God of mercy shall come to meet me. God shall let me see my desire on my enemies. Do not slay them, lest my people forget. Scatter them by your power and bring them down, O Lord, our shield. For the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips, let them even be taken in their pride. For the cursing and lying which they speak, consume, consume them in wrath, consume them that they may not be, and let them know that God rules in Jacob to the ends of the earth. And at evening they return, they growl like a dog and go all around the city. They wander up and down for food and howl if they are not satisfied. But I will sing of your power. Yes, I will, I will sing aloud of your mercy in the morning. For you have been my defense and refuge in the day of trouble. To you, O oh my strength, I will sing praises, for God is my defense, my God of mercy. Wow. Uh, this was ironically relevant to, oh, can I say this, what, the, what, the, what they're doing to Netanyahu. Oh, I said it. You'll have to listen to the Middle East update uh, tomorrow with Amir, and he's going to update you on that. But... <laughs> This general truth of evil people that are driven by demonic forces that go against God's people, this is very graphic, and you can see the uh, emotions coming out of this. Um, take note of that, friends, because there are uh, some very graphic words here, you know. Um, we'll comment on that later, because I just wanted to plant that seed. Is this too extreme? I mean, the Bible's very direct. Now, I want to go to the last chapter, which we're going to break up into two sections. And we're going to have Montel read verses 1 through 18 of John. Montel, we'll see if your connection holds up. <laughs> All right? I think it's doing pretty good now. I hope so. <laughs> it sounds like it is. If, uh, if we lose you, I'll pick up where you're at, and uh, we'll see how it goes. But... Verses 1 through 18, Montel. All right. Now, before we before we begin, I want to do a drum, I want to do a like a virtual drum roll. <laughs> because last week we covered the passion of the Christ. And friends, if a shiver doesn't run down your spine when he reads this and when uh, Joel continues through the very end, 
I don't know, man. This is like this is like the event. In one weekend, Jesus conquers sin, death, and demonic forces in a weekend. What did you do last weekend? This is this is big. This is this is like the biggest event in human history. So, uh, Montel, now you can read All verses right. one through eighteen. Now the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter therefore went out and the other disciple and were going to the tomb. So they both ran together, and the other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying there, yet he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb, and he saw the linen clothes lying there, and the handkerchief, the handkerchief that had been around his neck, his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but folded together in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who came to the tomb first went in also, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not know the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again to their own homes. But Mary stood outside by the tomb weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. Then they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Now when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, Sir, if you have carried, away, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him, Rabbani. Jesus said to her, do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. Wow, wow, wow. Interacting with the resurrected Jesus. Huge. Now, I'm not going to disrupt the, the train of thought too much, and, and Joel is going to take us all the way to the end of the chapter. Joel, verses 19 to 31. All right. Yes, sir. Um, verse 19. Then the same day at evening, beginning the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, peace be to you. As the father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now Thomas came, uh, called the twin. One of the twelve was not, with them, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him, We have seen the Lord. So he said to them, Unless I see the hand, the hands, the print of the nails, and put my finger in the print of the nails, and put my hand and to his side, I will not believe. And after eight days, his disciples were again inside and Thomas with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut, I mean, the doors being shut and stood in the midst and said, peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, reach your finger here and look at my hands and reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. 
Blessed are those who have not seen, yet have believed. And truly, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. Wow, many other things. Huh. I suppose if a book was to be written, the pages would go all the way around the earth, <laughs> and that would be chapter one. <laughs> I, I, you know, the thing that came out to me was that, and that is um, Jesus was so, so busy, but he always had time for people because he was so focused on his mission, and in some way, shape, or form, he made every situation maximized. And uh, I love the fact that he comes to us in our disbelief, and like Thomas, he substantiates the truth. Here, Thomas, take your hand and feel for yourself, and then you can, you can decide. I love how Jesus comes to us and reassures us. Every time I prepare a sermon, there's a verse that I don't understand. I just ask God, look, look I don't understand this. And it's just a matter of time before God reveals to me um, what that means. And because uh, he wants us to understand his word. Now, I didn't go to Tess or, Tess or Montel. Uh, we've, we've heard from Brock and Joel. So Tess, let me start with you. Two very powerful chapters, Tess. I mean, what did you hear the Lord say in either of these chapters? We would love to know. Well, in Psalm 59, what stood out to me was um, the writer of the psalm saying all these things about the wicked. And like you said, very graphic, so relevant for today. But he does not end the psalm like that. And even in the middle, I love the buts. But you, mm. oh Lord, you are my defense. Mm. But I will sing of your power. I love that. I like that. I, I, I didn't necessarily see that myself. Uh, there's a contrast conjunction of what we could be focusing on amidst all of this swamp that we have to tolerate uh, with our, you know, with all the evil going on. I, I think that's very, very insightful. Yeah. Montel, <laughs> your internet is holding up. <laughs> yeah, it's doing pretty good right now. <laughs> well, let's jump in and hear what the Spirit of God said to you, Montel. I mean, yeah. This is pretty powerful stuff. Uh, what did what did what did Spirit of God say to you? So it's like it's funny because you saw that we saw that like some of the disciples didn't know the scripture, so they didn't know that Jesus would rise again from the mm. dead. Yeah. But when you talk about Thomas also saying that he needed to see Jesus for himself to believe it, and Jesus said, "Blessed is the man that believes without seeing." And even the Pharisees and the scribes, they knew the scripture, but they, when it was right in front of their faces, they still denied and they ended up wanting Jesus dead. And it's like, it's just super interesting when a person can have so much pride and stuff and, and so-called have wisdom and knowledge of what the truth is, but then you see, oh, you guys actually don't have the the wisdom that you think you have and you definitely don't have faith because you were seeking your messiah and he's right in front of your face and you didn't even know it wow wow that's heavy wow it it, it it's very true the even time they they had to accept it was a process even where jesus worked with them and was patient with them and then when they got it in peter's case when Peter got it at Pentecost, he gave his lightning bolt sermon and thousands of people came to faith and they were all willing to go to death. Most of them did. Wow. Folks, young adults, young adults reading, believing and applying the word of God. Do not believe the lie that our young adults are following just all like a cattle into globalism. Many are not. And you're seeing them on the screen. Lovely Lane. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Blessed is the one who believes, even though they haven't seen yet they believe. That is key because that's you and me. I mean, that's we're exercising faith. Um, let's do this. 
Thank you uh, for this comment, Ver Verona. Look at that, young adults. See how encouraging these people are? Uh, let's move to... Um, yes, look at this. Lynn, testimony. Sal, amen. I had a very dramatic conver conversion. Again, I was cursed. Again, I was a God cursing atheist who asked God to reveal himself to me, and he did. Mm -hmm. All right. Have the guts to pray mm -hmm. honest prayers and say, Jesus, show me if you're there. Prove mm -hmm. to me. Be a Thomas. That's what he's asking. Um, Oh, and that, this leads to Gary's comment simultaneously. I know we've heard from Gary now the second time. It's unfortunate that today we have so many people that are, are like Thomas, doubt or simply do not believe. Yet Jesus tells us that we are blessed because we believe even though we have not seen as the disciples did. That's absolutely. Um, you know, the Thomases of the world, if you, if you just humble yourself like Thomas did, God likes that. And he loves to respond to that. But if you're a Thomas that's arrogant, <laughs> even if God shouted, you might not even hear. Yeah. Think about it. Okay, Carolyn, very good. Listen to this. Being confident of this very thing, Philippians 1, verse two, uh, 6, that he that began a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's that day where we see him face to face in the rapture and we have a new body, no more back aches, no more disease. Um, let's put a few more up here. Uh, the, the, the comments section is just filled. Um, let's see here. Um, oh, uh, look at this. Look at this. Young people, look at this. Laura Lee ran, 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 young people are our frontline warriors and we older folks need to keep their supply lines abundantly flowing. Look at the smiles on the screen, Laura. You just encouraged uh, some of our young adults. Um, um, oh, God. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Lynn, here's one more from Lynn. Um, uh, oh, oh, wait, no, that's not the one, hold on. Jesus is our defender. And he is the ultimate battle scars, has the ultimate battle scars. For those in the past who did see him, saw the scars before his ascension, and we in the future will see. Yes, we will. Um, a lot of comments. Folks, again, catch the vision. If you're not a Bible reader, listen to it. Grab one of these apps, sit back, listen, get a small group going have a listen to the chapter and then discuss it. It's so simple. Do an online thing. And it, it's just so simple. Uh, that's the vision we have in Behold Israel is to get the word of God out to the nations, get people into it, and more specifically prophecy, equipping you with understanding prophecy. So Brock, Joel, Tess, and Montel, I wanna thank you all. And since Montel's internet is working so well, I'm going to ask that you just say a, a closing prayer before I give uh, some information to the community. Montel, uh, will you close us, please? Yeah. Lord, thank you for this time you've allowed us to all have together. Thank you for your word and the things that you've spoken to each one of us. Thank you for all the people that you've allowed us to touch in this meeting. I thank you for your your un and your never-ending love. Even those who hate you, you still have love for, and you're waiting for them to be you. And I thank you for that love. And I pray and ask that you allow us to keep having our eyes open every day and restore faith in us that we've lost and continue to restore that faith and build build us up for Jesus. And I pray and ask, I pray and ask this for all of us that are on this call right now. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, I'm going to say goodbye to all of you guys, and I have a quick announcement just for the community. Actually, let me do it while you're on the screen. I think that'll work better. Grandmas, parents, young adults, if you're watching this, we have a young adults retreat in Texas in August. 
go to beholdisrael.org and you can see it there. You can register there, young adult, if you're between the age of 18 to 26. We are going to equip some of our young adults that attend here with the word of God. You're going to meet people from all over the continent of the United States and Canada, and you're going to be equipped more for prophecy. And we uh, are very excited about it. And uh, these are the kind of young adults that you can expect to see uh, coming out of the discipleship program. God is doing the work, and we're just the wires that connect it all together. And so with that being said, next week, same time, same place, Pastor Mike here, public reading of Scripture. Read and listen to the Bible, especially in the last days when a lot of false teachings and itching ears want to go hear crazy doctrines. We say it stops now, and we are going to commit to a deeper level in God's Word. That's why we do these. So uh, stick around, all of you guys here in the forum, because I'm going to see you outside the studio. But for those watching, thank you, God bless, and we'll see you next week. Bye for now.